Before we talk about on the field matters, just the news has come out recently about Ross Burberry leaving the football club. What impact did he have on, on Lincoln in his spell here? A huge impact in a positive way. A lovely guy, lovely person. Um, completely changed the way um, we train as a club. Um, I carefully say we because I wasn't part of what happened previously, good or bad, I'm not saying it was either. Um, but in terms of the DNA of what we try and do and the work ethic and the mindset, um, really fascinating, really aggressive, really tough, uh, high level. Um, there's no easy days. Um, I think pre-season um, we were doing around 70k a week. And I think a lot of clubs, the maximum they would get up to on their hardest week would be maybe 40, 50. We were doing that in that first week, so I think it caught everybody by surprise, just like the lights going out have. Um, it was an easy sell for me because I'm a huge believer in hard work. So, um, Really disappointed to see Ross leave. Uh, we wish him well. He was a big part of, of what we are building here. And um, the biggest compliment I can pay him is that we will try to continue um, learn and develop the work that he's done. So um, we, we're not looking at ripping up the rule book or anything like that. We want to continue the great foundations that he's laid here. A deadline day's done and dusted then. How do you feel about it? Uh, very positive. Um, I said from day one, the goal is always to come out of the window stronger than when you've started and we've 100% done that. Uh, on terms of the, the signings you, you did make over that kind of last 24, 48 hours, Luke Plange, obviously a player who's played a bit of football at, at this level and, and certainly someone who's come with quite a reputation. Uh, yeah, I remember Luke well from last year. We, um, we, we played Derby at Pride Park and we're 2-0 up with about four minutes left at Birmingham and uh, we drew 2-2 two -two and Luke scored uh, an outstanding equaliser. So um, it was nice to get him on our side this time round for me personally. Um, a talented boy, got some great tools, plays in the shoulder, runs in behind. He's a very proactive player, bright, intelligent, uh, really good profile, still grown into his body. Um, certainly a player for... I think he's a player for the future, he is a player for today, but I think his, his, in time with the experience we can give him and what we can offer him, I think he'll, he'll, uh, he'll be one to watch for sure. And although it might, you know, it's a long time away looking ahead to next season, is he someone that you think you could hold on to for a loan next year or is it about showing Crystal Palace as a club, look, this is what we can do for your players, a bit like the club have done in the past with other teams? Um, yeah, about the, the... I'd love to say yes, the reason why I don't is because if... If, and we hope that Luke excels and does really well here, the likelihood is that he'll, he'll go back to the championship. That's the way loans work. We're a club that um, we're a club that develops players and gives people a platform to shine and to move on to, to I, I say, progressive, uh, a progressive environment. By that I mean the championship, we're not in the championship. So, um, you know, we, we'd love to keep our loan players here, but there's a reason why they leave. They come in, they do great, and they, they go on and step up. Um, one thing we're very good at is at doing that and most of the players that have left here have gone on to do be better things for themselves so um, that will be difficult if Luke does well um, I think it's different if you look at Ethan Ethan was a player who I will carefully say is the start of what I'd like to look at as a, a rebuild or a transitional period for us as a team uh, and with regards to Ethan what is it what qualities did you, you feel that he would bring to this team um, number one, I think we have one thing we have done since I've been at the club is change the profile of the player. Um, League One's all about athleticism and pace. Um, we have uh, done that. He brings that in abundance. Uh, he's six foot plus, which helps. Um, so in terms of size, I think it's really important. Um, I don't want to talk about other clubs. If you look at when Mourinho went into Man United, I think within his first transfer window, I think he'd. The, the, the team grew by two or three centimetres and um, so certainly his profile was attractive first and foremost. Um, technically very good, uh, incredible tactical understanding of, of his role and his position in the team. I want to get away from, so you can permission to punch me Rob if I keep saying this, I want to get away from out of possession. It's a huge part of our DNA but his game understanding out of possession is phenomenal. I think what we can give him is give him a position um, and put him in a team that allows them to play 15 yards further up the pitch. He predominantly played as a six this year. Um, can see a pass, can pick a pass. Um, aggressive when he presses, good athlete. Just got a really good all-round game. And I th again, I think we'll be a really good platform for each other. Uh, and the fact you mentioned there about you know the start of, of rebuilding 
this team. Does that mean you've had to, to change in terms of recruitment what you're after as a football club and that you've had to, to relook at the type of players you wanted to bring in? Uh, type of players, yes. Um, I think our recruitment model is outstanding. I think that's uh, been proven time and time again. Uh, we haven't had to do anything differently with that. Um, I don't really, I can't speak for other managers. Um, I don't really know what's gone on in the past and, and they've had some great players come. Um, but I definitely have wanted to be heavily involved in the players that come into the club, what they look like, particularly around profile and players. Um, I'd like to think, looking at it, we've had more of an impact on that than maybe what the club have done previously. Um, with regards to, to the lone players, obviously you've got too many lone players to put all into your match day squad. How difficult is that going to have to be to, to balance the, the expectations of those lone players? Yeah, it's not something we wanted to do. Um, it's not something we came into the window in August or January um, where we wanted too many long play lone players. It's, it's kind of happened organically, but not through us having a, 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 a plan to do that, or succession planning to do that. Um, it's not the worst problem to have in the world. When I look at our team for this year, we've really lacked the ability to change games. And um, we've really lacked the ability to make substitutions on 60, 70 minutes. Um, if you look at data and stats, a lot of teams now in the Premier League, and as you drop down the pyramid, um, I can name you five or six clubs on 60, 70 minutes, bang, three players are going on. I can name them in Air League because they've got the ability to do that because um, players coming on are statistically uh, proven that they'll be at a higher level um, of um, output than the starting lads that are coming off. So uh, we're now in a position where we can finally do that. Um, and with regards to, to those players that have, have come into the football club, are they good and raring to go, the fact that they've, they've been playing at, at other clubs and you've brought them in mid-season? Um, yes and no. Ethan, yes. Luke, somewhere in between. Dylan, not quite ready yet. Um, Dylan's an outstanding young talent. We haven't spoken about him. Um, really, really lucky to get him. A really talented boy. A brilliant kid. Um, Brilliant personality, brilliant character, left and right foot, quick. Again, when you're seeing profile size, athleticism, pace. Um, so he's a little bit behind everybody just in terms of fitness. A week on from Tom Hopper's departure, club captain, Regan took the armband and, and has done a lot this season. Will he be your new captain? It's not something we've discussed. There's, there is no conversation to have. Um, it's something we'll address at the end of the season. It's no problem. Um, Tom's moved on. Regan's been captain for, I'm going to guess, 75, 80% of the year. Um, so it's not something we've had to discuss. He's, he's aware of his role and what he does for the team. Um, have we talked about it? Yes, but I'm talking passing comments. We haven't had an office meeting or a, can I have five minutes with you? Um, you know, Regan takes over the armband, deserves that. But it's not something we've discussed. You don't need a captain's armband to be a leader, Rob. Um, six shots on target over the last three league games. How do you go about improving that output? Yeah, it's something we've... It's funny. Um, through irony more than anything, we work so hard on it. Um, we spend a lot of time of our training programme on that um, without going into too much detail. Um, we spend a lot of time on how to get into those areas. When I look at the Cambridge game in particular, I think we had 20 crosses. I talked about our final execution being letting us down and that ultimately is what we have to improve on. Um, I think we've got the players and the ability to do that. Um, but it's something we have to change, it's something we have to fix. Um, if you wanted to talk about our defensive capabilities and what we've done this year, it's, it's super, super impressive. Uh, it's the opposite end of the pitch that we have to fix and have to change. Um, it's something we are aware of, Rob. It's not something we, it's not something we hide under the carpet. It's something we don't discuss. We actually spend a good seventy percent of our time and our training. Um, I can tell you that ninety percent of our training was on that today alone. Um, so it's something we heavily focus on. Um, so yeah, it's something we're working hard at. As you say, the defensive side of the game has been really good this season. Is it letting the shackles off and giving the, the players a chance to express themselves the answer? No, I completely disagree with that. 
Um, I'll ask you who's top of the league. Play at Plymouth. Okay. What system do they play? Same as. Yeah. You. Who, who do you think the best footballing team in the league is? Probably Plymouth. Yeah, or arguably, I would say it's Ipswich football. Yeah, yeah. So we play, we play a very aggressive attacking system. Uh, we attack with five, we defend with five. I think we've probably got into a habit of, instead of having a counter-press and counter-attacking team, which we've been very good at, I think we've probably, in the last seven to ten games, probably have ended up being ten yards deeper than we should have. Uh, but one thing we do want to do going forward is be more aggressive, be on the front foot. I want to get back to how we were at the start of the season. We were a very aggressive front foot, 4-3-3. If you play, we'll squeeze the life out of you. The problem we had with that was people stopped playing out from the back against us. And, uh, and not many teams do in our league. So you can only press against somebody who, who plays out. Um, and in the game last week, the few times that Cambridge did it, I thought we were excellent at it. But not a lot of teams do it in the league. Um, but it's definitely something I, I want to get back to. The flip side of that is when we did it in the shape we're in, we were scoring a lot of games, but I think we were averaging two goals a game. So that's why we came away from it. But I think what I'd like to do, to answer your question, Rob, I apologise, is find a really good balance. And that's something we're working on and something we're, we're, we're talking about constantly. How crucial do you see Saturday's game? As crucial as every other game. No different to any other game. No different to the game against Exeter, away to Bolton, um, home to Morecambe. They're all crucial. They're all every game means as much as me as the next one. Um, but the next game is the most important one <laughs> because it's the next one. And how difficult will Accrington be after you know they've had a obviously you both had um, you know Tuesday off, but they had a, a good game last week against Leeds. Yeah, and I caught the first 25 minutes of it. I thought they were excellent. I think they had four or five shots on goal. I thought they'd Leeds on the back front, uh, back foot. Look. Home record's outstanding, uh, not lost many games at home. Games they have lost have been against your Derbys and your Boltons and big times. So, um, just like any game, I think they'll be as tough as anybody we've played this year. Um, big side, physical, aggressive, um, play really good football at times. I've seen that. Uh, I think they mixed their game up really well, from playing good passages of play to them being quite direct. Set pieces are massive. Um, you know, got a long throw. And... Uh, John's probably bored of me saying this, but they've got an outstanding manager. We've, we've had them twice recently, so uh, somebody stood the test of time. And um, I think they've proven on, a, on many, many times this year um, when they're on top of the game, uh, they're a tough team to beat. But likewise, I think we are too. And we're going there to win. We're not going there to sit back and try and get a draw. And we're going there to win the game. On Green Football Weekend, help football, help the planet. Walk on. Driving less to the game could prevent tons of carbon pollution. Stay cool. If we all turn the heating down by just one degree, it will be like taking tons of cars off the road. And taste the future. If we all ate one veggie meal a week, it could be like saving thousands of trees. Oh, what a save! Score green goals for your club on Green Football Weekend.